I think one of the greatest misconceptions about being a programmer is that you need to be excellent at math. And I don't think that's necessarily true if you're good for the vast majority of subtypes of programming and jobs that you might want to get. In this video, I'll be talking about the different types of programming you're probably going to be getting into and what type of math you're probably going to need for those. Some require very little math and some require a lot of math if you want to be really excellent at them. So we're going to talk about those. Namely, we're just going to talk about being a normal web developer or mobile app developer and machine learning. And we're going to separate those two and talk about the math that you're going to need for both of them. My name's Sid and I like to make videos about math, programming, productivity, books, and a whole lot more. So if you enjoy this video, hit the subscribe button. Only a small percentage of my viewers are subscribed and hitting the subscribe button helps me out a lot and you can always unsubscribe later. I think a myth that the public and a lot of people end up accidentally propagating is that you need to be really excellent at math to be a good programmer, that you need to be able to take advanced math classes and do them really well so that you can be a good programmer or a software engineer. And that's definitely not true in my experience. For example, if you're a web developer or a mobile app developer that isn't building anything related to the sciences or something that would involve a lot of mathematical calculations just normally, then you're not going to be need to be excellent at math. Of course, you're going to have to have really great problem solving skills and math develops problem solving skills, but you're not going to have to know every advanced math class. You're not going to have to know calculus to be a good web developer or a mobile app developer. Of course, the more math you know, the better, right? It's great to know a lot of math. And of course, knowing basic algebra is probably something you're gonna to have to end up using a lot because it helps you with your problem solving skills. And that's something that'll pop up regardless of what type of programming you're gonna do. Your job as a programmer isn't really to be writing code, it's to be solving problems. Now don't let this fact that you don't need to be great at math discourage you from going out to learn more math because being excellent at math does help. For a lot of companies, they like to have like data structures and algorithms interviews and to be able to be good at data structures and algorithms, you're going to have to pick up some mathematical topics here and there and be able to apply those to data structures and algorithms and then apply what you've learned from data structures and algorithms in interviews or competitive programming problems if you want to do competitive programming. So, you know, if you want to go into web development or mobile app development, if you're not having the best time in your calculus class, you're not getting a really great grades on your test, don't stress about it. You pass the class, it's fine. And remember, you don't need to be an excellent math student to be a great developer. Now let's talk about the field that you're definitely gonna have to learn quite a bit of math to properly understand and not just be a script kitty that's running, writing a bunch of code and not really understanding what's happening with the code you're writing. Machine learning. Machine learning is you know notorious or famous, infamous, whichever way you wanna call it, for requiring quite a bit of math. You're gonna to need to know calculus, linear algebra, and have a good understanding of probability and statistics. So I'm gonna walk you through each of those three things, uh, calculus, linear algebra, and probability and statistics, and talk about what exactly you're gonna need and how they might apply to your machine learning journey as you go forward. If you're already an experienced machine learning engineer, then you're not obviously gonna have anything to gain from this video and you should just click off, but let's get straight into it. First, let's talk about calculus. Something that everybody likes to talk about is being, you know, the hard math. When somebody says they're doing calculus, everybody's like, oh, you're a genius or whatnot. Uh, well, not really, but people assume that calculus is super hard. And it def there are definitely a lot of concepts that are hard to understand. But with a bit of elbow grease, you can get a really nice understanding and develop nice intuition about it. So calculus is really important in machine learning because a lot of things like gradient descent depend on calculus. And you're not going to be just fine with learning single variable calculus, you're probably gonna have to end up learning multivariable calculus because that's where gradients and such really appear and that's where you learn about um, things like gradient descent, or at least I did in my multivariable calculus class. Once you know calculus, you have a pretty good understanding of some of the mechanics of neural networks and you're able to be like, oh, so that's where this came from and you're able to connect the two things in your head and that's a really nice feeling when you're able to connect what you learn in math class to something you're doing in programming or machine learning and when you put those two things together and you're like, wow, I'm actually kind of smart. Another one of the big mathematical fields you're going to hear about when you're trying to learn machine learning is linear algebra. And very simplistically, linear algebra is just the math that, de that deals with matrices and linear transformations. Matrices are a big part of machine learning, especially deep learning and neural networks. Matrix multiplication is huge there. Other concepts like eigenvector, eigenvector sorry, and eigenvalues are also really important. And having a good understanding of those and having a very rigorous understanding of those gives you a lot of intuition for what you're actually doing behind the scenes when you're coding, like what your code is actually doing in terms of math. 
as well as a nice mathematical understanding of what your code is doing. And that's very valuable because it makes you a little bit more efficient when you're writing your machine learning code. And it also helps you understand what's happening so you don't just end up writing whatever you see in a tutorial without really understanding what's happening and then not being able to debug it properly. If you want to learn linear algebra, then MIT Open's Courseware has a great course by Gilbert Strang um, that's recommended by basically everybody. And there's also a nice uh, book by George I.E. Shilov that talks about linear algebra, and it's a really great text for learning it. And since I apparently forgot to talk about where you should be learning calculus for machine learning, um, there's a lot of great resources. You could just go through Khan Academy, you can get a textbook. There's so many places to learn calculus on the internet. Um, and there's a bunch of great resources, so you really shouldn't have any trouble finding anything. If you're just getting started, try Khan Academy. It's a great resource. And of course, we can't talk about math behind machine learning without talking about statistics and probability. Although people probably call it probability of statistics. It's the foundational thing behind machine learning. And, you know, a lot of people to ask the question, is machine learning just statistics? And I can't really give an answer on that because I'm not qualified enough. Um, but, you know, kind of is. A lot of the math behind machine learning is related to statistics, and a lot of people just say machine learning is applied statistics. Now, whether you think that's true or not, you can't debate the fact that learning probability and statistics is really important to having a good understanding of machine learning. And now there's a lot of great resources for getting really good at probability and statistics, one of them being Seeing Theory by Brown. Um, it's basically an interactive website where you learn probability and statistics through interactive um, textbooks, through an interactive textbook with a lot of good questions a lot of exercises that really help you understand what probability statistics is and understand the intuition behind it. And it's accompanied by a bunch of really, really beautiful visualizations. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Now, once you have a good understanding of probability statistics, you'll be able to understand a lot of things in machine learning, especially if you've already learned things like calculus and linear algebra, like I just mentioned. And once you do that, you're going to be pretty good at machine learning. You've got the math and now you just have to practice coding things up and really understanding what you're coding. So in conclusion, what math do you really need to be a great programmer? Nothing really. You don't need a lot of math. You just need to be a great problem solver. But if you're going into fields like machine learning or even maybe game development, where you're going to have to know some math and physics to like program physics simulations or program physics engines for your games, then you're going to have to learn some math if you're doing machine learning. You're gonna have to learn calc, linear algebra, and probability of statistics. If you're doing game dev, you're gonna to need to be applying quite a bit of math every day, maybe calculus sometimes. Um, but at the end of the day, you'll be able to learn what you need to learn. But if you're gonna be like a web developer, a mobile app developer, I don't think you need to know a lot of math. And you shouldn't be too worried about not being the greatest math student because not because just because you're not great at math doesn't mean you're not gonna be great at programming. The two different things. And you can be a great problem solver without being great at math at first. And that's all I have to say to you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment down below talking about what you want to see next on this channel or maybe any questions that you have about this video. If you want to talk to me or the community more, then join the Discord server that I linked in the description below. You can also follow me on my socials. Again, links in description. Subscribe to my newsletter if you would prefer. I send that out every two weeks. There's a lot of cool information in there. Also link in the description. And also, I'm going to be running a seven-day-long Python course from June 13th to June 19th, I think, about a Python crash course for data science. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to learning more about it in the description down below, and you can reach out to me if you want to enroll. I'll see you all in the next video, and I hope you have a great day.